now, okay. now you're getting down to well, specifics. So, okay, so one of the techniques to sort of blend, it's like, it's like we were in Photoshop or in the, in the darkroom, we just don't want straight lines, we want things to blend. So blending mm -hmm. techniques can be scraping back. Okay. Or another layer over. Okay. okay. Or a pigment stick. Okay, so there's actually, like, and it's interesting to think about a flow chart. Like, these are personal preferences, and sometimes it, it comes down to almost a confidence. Like, where do I feel like my techniques and my abilities are strong enough or stronger that I'm going to choose that technique? It also a little bit of a look, right? Mm -hmm. So scraping back has a certain look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. adding more wax has a certain look right and toning with pigment sticks has a certain look so okay. um we could actually take that piece and i think in a weird way you could kind of divide it into thirds mm -hmm. and try try a, each technique Not each okay yeah because and then and then what's going to be really cool is that Again, like we're still, we're just learning. Like we're we're gonna, you know, it'll it'll come together as a finished piece no matter what. But in as we're going, we can just really experiment and say, okay, I'm identifying what scraping back looks like. I'm identifying what adding more wax looks right. like, and okay. I'm identifying what toning, uh, right. like what paint toning looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so let me um, demonstrate scraping back. And okay. um, I actually got more, I got some wooden tools which I didn't have before, and it, it helped when I was scraping back the figure, uh -huh. the wax over the figure. So I, I saw because I had so much trouble scraping back before, but these um, the wooden ones, you know, like this shape, right that you show me, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so, so I always go, I always love that saying, like wild to mild, right? Wild, wild to mild, so. Wait, what's the saying? I didn't hear it, I couldn't uh, hear it. The saying, wild to, mi wild to mild, right? Wild to mild. So mild to me in wax talk means like perfectly smooth. Oh, okay. And simple, that's always what I consider mild, right? And then you can go like my, you know, in steps gradually to to totally wild is like super textured, you know, deep. Yeah. Many colors, like, you know, like I actually probably should do for fun, just like what I, like a vocabulary, a visual vocabulary. That's a, that's a great idea, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sort of of what I consider like mild and all the way to wild. And I mean, even in my own work, you know, like there's no reason why just one simple layer of wax medium over a photo with a little bit of hand touching isn't like beautiful. Like that is a right. wax piece. Like that's a photo encaustic work of art. It's mm -hmm. just simple and pure, <laughs> you know, and there's a part of me that is like, oh my God, that's just so, you know, so nice. And then when you really get three dimensions and lots of movement and lots of texture and layers, mm -hmm. you're, you're starting to embrace this, you know, more wild, like more, I think of like, do you know the work of Amsel Kiefer? No, <laughs> it's another one I'll look up. <laughs> um, yeah, wait, I mean, I can show you just super quickly. I'll just do screen share. I mean, and the reason that I, it's sometimes like nice, you know, I like to have, um, visual references. Ansel mm -hmm. uses tar. His, oh, name, okay. his name is Anselm Kiefer. He's an uh, abstract German expressionist. Oh, I think I did. You, I think you did talk about him. Let me see it. But I think I did um, look him up. Right. Let, let me just see. Because you talked about him before. Same what I'm thinking of. Right. And what, what I always like to talk about with him is that, you know, he actually went, you know, talk about like 3D. Like, he actually put yeah. stars. Yeah, I do remember this now. Yeah. Oh okay. my God. Like I love him. Like I cannot even mm -hmm. tell you. I, I was so lucky to see an exhibition that he had here in Philadelphia. I mean, 
but he is really like to me as wild as you can get like these paintings are so thick right mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. they're literally like being um you know like they're just so three-dimensional i mean and they're you know maybe they're not for everybody i mean i just like love them though i mean like if that if you can't like walk into that like <laughs> yeah right? no I, I see it yeah so it's about depth it's just about depth and also like a lot of contrast high key like to mm -hmm. me high key contrast between like these ashy you know white and and black you know mm -hmm. and then if mm -hmm. you talk about like you know like the even the impressionist painters like they just traditional they won't even use black paint you know they'll use dark blue or dark green or or dark purple but they will not use you know black paint so you know there's a lot of things always to be learned you know by looking at, at people's art but and then minimalistic would be like you know pastel -y, light dreamy like mm -hmm. like vapor ether right mm -hmm. like barely there like much more on the spiritual side of, of things okay so for me <clears throat> scraping is scrape like serious scraping is always with a razor blade okay so and i buy these um this these came from amazon and i oh i just like every time i i just love them so much because they're individually wrapped mm -hmm. in paper but then I have to stop and think about who wrapped them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's making two dollars a day. Does it break your heart? I mean, I swear yeah. that sometimes in let like how do we do it? Like how do we how, yeah. how do we I, I have this thing and I've been using it. I, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Oh my God, look at you. And that's a couple inches wide, right? That's great. So, so that has a handle. And, yeah. um, okay, so I have those. What happens for me with those is I get like wax all over them and then yeah. I feel like they're dirty and I, or, the, or I break them. I actually break those little things. Wow. I, I um, you know, there's a kind of a lip on the hot plate and I kind of run the, the blade with the wax over that and then, then I can, it's, it melts the wax. It's like right against, you know, there's a little channel in there. Uh -huh. I just push the um, blade against that. So that, that's, I can get the wax off more easily that way. Oh, that's cool. All right, wait, I'm trying, I'm trying to find just a piece. I want to find a piece I can just like scrape. I have a box of um, I have a box of panels that I'm gonna like reuse. I'm sorry, hold on one second. So you you have created like a couple. I'm just gonna use this just, and it's not a great. It's just it's just a kid's. It's probably just like a kid sample, but it has like a couple you know layers on it, right? Oh yeah, very right. Yeah. Right, you can tell about the texture, right? So mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna show, like, if I use the razor blade, mm -hmm. right, I tend to like the wax to be hard, you know, and- it's Hard, okay. Hard, right. like not, not warm, like mm -hmm. cool. I should use, the, it's more about temperature, right? So cool. Mm -hmm. And what happens, what the, the look for me is that when you're using the razor blade, you're going back through the layers so you're going in reverse of what you painted right so you're going to see it in reverse it's like playing the film backwards so what whatever you laid down there you're going to evoke and bring to the surface in the same in order of how you put them on there so for example like if you had laid down colors like uh, wax medium white black uh, and then gray, right? Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. scrape back, you're going to go in reverse. So you're going to go, you know, gray to black and then black to white and then eventually mm -hmm. white to wax medium. So I like it because what I see is I slowly start to see things emerge and I start to see what I call blending of colors or shapes. 
I did some of this on um, the black area because you had said go um, horizontally, you know. And just, so I I did some scraping that I, it wasn't just the around the figure, but I'm doing some more now, you know. And when you taught when you taught us in the, the in one of the later classes about that black on one side, white on one side, and then you, yeah, you yeah. straight black. I mean, that, oh my gosh, I've got so much wax. Oh my I, know, I know, so you really, but what I also really like, Pam, mm -hmm. about doing this is I really like the sort of dialogue of the two different worlds, right? So it's like, like, so now what I, like, because I've scraped this part, it's totally smooth, right? And there's texture in it, you can see, Right. You see how there's texture there, but it's smooth to the touch. This is better than when I tried doing it before, but I still have trouble, you know, with something that's highly textured. This is somewhat textured, highly textured to get it really smooth. So the thing about highly textured, there's a couple of things. One is you can put, a, you can always go back to a layer of wax media. So if you have a lot of texture but you want it to be smoother you can basically um drench it right or coat it uh with wax medium so that you're smoothing it not getting rid of the color right right you'll mm -hmm. be like lightly giant and so some of it will go into the holes of the wax is that yes so the yeah. wax medium could be like a clear coat yeah. That could smooth a very textured area if you wanted it to, um, but like you're you're gonna like lose stuff. Like I I mean I should have done like before and afters of this, but like there was a lot of like pink on here like in the middle, and I scraped. Oh wow! It. Yeah. I, I mean I literally scraped it off. So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of a crapshoot, I would say, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. scraping because. You can't, while you're scraping, it's just kind of happening, and then you're like, oh shit, that's gone. Like, oh shit. Right. I, I, yeah. But you're also getting something new. So you're sort of, you know, you're sort of like, I always used to call like the photo, like photo shoots, like, you know, kind of like, especially when we shot film, you know, I'd be like, let's like make a call out to the photo gods, you know, because at the end of the day, as good as you think you are, it's going to be a little bit of luck. You know, that, that the type 55 Polaroid works, you know, like whatever. <laughs> right. Because, right. you know, it basically was, uh, you know, a dysfunctional process. So if I'm it doing works, a lot of um, um, slow shutter speed work, and it's always, it's like, am I going to get anything? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Like my friend Jamie is doing, um, she's doing pinhole photography, you know. Oh, and, oh cool. That's yeah. Crazy. And it's, it's nice because, you really are, you have no idea what's happening. You have no idea if your five second exposure is working, you know, like, and so then you can just be you know, grateful and surprised when something happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, I, have, I, have another, like, I have another question yeah. about, because this has been um, getting, you, getting the textured areas smooth has been something I've been, you know, battling. <laughs> Um, so is there a way when, with the encaustic medium to thin it out? Because sometimes when I'm putting the wax on, it just seems like it, I'm just creating another layer, but it doesn't, it doesn't get into the holes. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's yeah. a good question. You know what I would say on that? Yeah. I would say the whole, and that's, a, that's actually a very um, keen observation that you're making. And um, if you're using encaustic paint, right, you yeah. definitely want to thin it out with medium. If you want the medium itself to be thinner, I think yeah. the only thing that you can do mm -hmm. is heat it up a little bit hotter. Oh, so it's really hot. Get it on right away while it's hot, hot. Oh, right. cool. And the other thing that I know that some people do mm -hmm. is they um, preheat their panel. 
They, oh, you know, I tried that, you know, on a cold, cooler morning out here. Yeah. I tried that. I briefly ran the, the heat gun over it to heat it, warm it up a bit before I started working. Yeah. But you're saying you like to do it cold. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't preheat my panel, but, um, okay. but a lot of people do. And I totally understand why they do it. Um, mm -hmm. And I do think that you get a little bit more. Now, maybe what is your, uh, did you ever purchase a, um, a pallet, ta like a tabletop uh, pallet thermometer? Did you ever get a thermometer? Um, I have a thermometer on the heating plate. And what is the temperature? Actually, right now, on one end it's 200, and at the other end of the plate, I think it's more than that. But I have the temperature set at a little more than 250, so I think the... Okay, so you could start to notice, though, if you find that the medium um, is, you know, moving more accurately or better for you at a, hot, a warmer temperature. And I could, I would say you could go slightly over 200. Okay. Um, but not if you have any encaustic paint on the palette. Okay. So if you just, and also one other suggestion, which might be helpful mm -hmm. for you is that my friend Marcy, um, he uses a crock pot, like an, a separate. Oh, yeah. Pot crock pot just for the wax medium it's and then I think she can control the temperature of just the wax medium okay. in that separate crock pot and you could keep the palette just for so wait I just wanted to show you I, I just randomly found this piece but like this is what I would call mild this is yeah. mild right? right so all of the wax on here is smooth right, right? even the stencil the stencil is in pan pastel and not in encaustic. There's no three-dimensional texture okay. to this at all, yeah. right? This is just smooth, totally smooth wax medium. So in a way, for my personal work, mm -hmm. I like, like multiple textures within the same piece. So mm -hmm. I right. feel like my work is gonna be like a combo of these two, like mm -hmm. there's going to be areas that are very smooth and what I call photographic. Right. And then there's gonna be areas that have more texture and are more encaustic, right? So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm always trying to marry these two, you know, like definitely being able to see my photo and recognize the form, but then also taking it into abstraction. So- But you also say, it sounds like you're also saying that you've got, the um the smooth and the texture but but basically overall it's smooth you by scraping back and overall i prefer my pieces smooth i like them to look like they have texture and pattern but i don't necessarily um love them really bumpy however like there are times like this is an interesting piece and I, I often, and this might be something that could be fun for you, is I often um, try, see, do you see how this is very textural? Yeah. I, I, it's very abstract, right. but like, it's interesting for me. This is sort of how I paint, just like freestyle. If I'm yeah. Yeah. Right. totally in my zone and right. I'm not, there's no photo here. This right. is just sort of how so just practice doing that. Just do some. I always think it's a really good idea to just let yourself go and play mm -hmm. with wax, play with texture, just paint. Because when you're working on your photos, you're kind of wearing a collar, you know, it's like <laughs> holding you back because you have these, you have a commitment, right? You're, you're like committed to this. Right. You know, that's right because that, that does, that's really good because that's something I could do, you know, in between times, you know, just to get more techniques. I don't have any art. Yes, tech. so pra practicing techniques. Yeah. Also, Pam, there's a part of you where you're like, you're in a duality. You're in a duality of a relationship. And it's like, you know, you're one side, the photographer is very strong, very knowledgeable, very experienced, and you're painter and caustic part is very young, very novice. <laughs> right. So how do you get these two yeah. to, to work, to play nicely, to work well together? So really you just, you need to do them separately and then you okay. need to bring them together and do them separately and bring them together. I think that that 
Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Okay. It will really free you up and also could just bring you some, you know, fun and joy. I think it's interesting to check in with yourself and be like, oh yeah, like if I wasn't responding to this photo, how would I act? Like, what would I do? So I, I have another question. This is, I, I, I totally agree. And actually, the, I'm glad you said that because I want to get out and play before it gets so cold I can't be out here. But I have another question about the actual medium. The, um, I, I, I've been using wax and caustic medium, but I also just got, by mistake, I got just pure white beeswax. Oh, so, yeah. Yes. So, where, you that, yeah, or? I do. And you know what, you know what, so I, I feel like I'm always confusing people, but when I first started working with um, encaustic, I really only used the bleach beeswax. Oh, really? Because, huh? because I was really just pouring it. I was literally melting it in a pan. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. And pouring it over the pieces. And I actually just, wait, I just recently made one. I'll show you. Um, it's a very beautiful process. Now this one I did, um, this one I did with wax medium. I mean, you can pour wax medium too, but if you pour, if you pour the bleached beeswax. Oh, wow. Oh so my gosh. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? And then I just literally, it was so simple. Like I just literally just poked little holes in it oh, and, really? and I scraped it back with a razor blade. Um, so that you could see it. But what I can do too is at the surface, like I, I can cut, you know, I can hand color it. So this is like a pigment stick. I mean, I can just hand color the surface. Oh, I can play. Now, can I combine them or is it better to do just the pure beeswax with what the type of work you're doing with that? Or can I use it combined? I do 50 50 now because I feel. Oh, okay. I do 50 50. Now, I've. For, for whatever reason, and I don't know, um, some of the waxes that I've used over the years um, really crystallize. Oh. So I think that it's any of the USP pharmaceutical grade organic waxes mm -hmm. that crystallize. So they, they like go through some type of like metamorphosis and they get mm -hmm. sparkly, sparkles. 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 Oh, but I know, and I don't, I, mean, I don't hate it, but I don't love it, you know? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. So that's why the medium, right? So the medium has resin in it, and resin is to wax what like preservatives are to white bread, right? Oh, oh okay. All right. So, so the resin, okay. the resin, right, holds the wax back from um, crystallizing. Yeah. Crystallizing. So look, I just added a little bit of um, pigment stick to this. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, okay. This, uh, okay. This, this is what I would call mild, right? And in, in a way, it's yeah. very, it's very beautiful. It's very sensitive. It's sweet. It's soft. If you want to do, if you want to do a pouring demonstration, we can do on our next session. And well, I, I have I have some other goals in mind. So okay. but, I, but I'm going to play with that. Yeah. So Wait, so you poured the wax on this. You didn't paint it on. I poured it on. So I basically melted like a you know like a tin. Right. And you could do I, I melted a tin of wax. You could do a 50-50 mixture of wax medium and bleached beeswax. Right. Okay. You okay. put the photo on the board. You put the board on a, a cookie tray. Mm -hmm. I, use, I use, I mean, I use, I have a bigger port, but I just put the board here on the cookie and tray yeah. and I literally take it and I literally pour it. And wow. what happens is that it just moves out and spreads and cools oh. equally and beautifully. Wow. And then when it's, temperature cools down, you can razor blade it a little bit and okay. pam, it goes right back to everything we know about photography and depth of field because the more mm -hmm. you scrape, the sharper it is and the thicker right. the wax, the right. more blurry. So it's okay. like when I finally like had the aha moment, like I didn't go into it, 
mm-hmm. intentionally understanding visually what was happening. But yeah. when I one day was like, holy shit, like this is exactly like the view camera. Like I'm yeah. creating like like uh, focus depth right. and field depth of field uh-huh. by thickness of wax. It was like awesome. crazy. Wow. yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I was just like I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be here. This is what I'm <laughs> supposed to do. It all makes sense. Like, it's like, yeah. So cool. Very cool. Then that surface can be hand painted. You mm-hmm. could draw into it. Right. You draw right. on it. Right. Mm-hmm. So you can write on it. Yeah. Right. You can draw into it. You can thin it with the razor blade. So it's really very beautiful um, process. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. So what, let's see what you've been doing. Okay, so I, 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 had, I scraped a lot. Well, I, but to me, it felt like I scraped a lot of wax, especially off the bottom. I did a little bit. But it's oh, deep, lovely. Oh, yeah, I love it. So, but, right. you know, I, I want to mention this area here. Yeah. You know, the dress. This is really beautiful in the photograph. That it's like a lace bottom, and I'd like to get down in there. So should, should I... So one of the like, things about getting down in there in a specific area is I think you should use your heat tool. Okay. To soften it. Okay. So that you can get into it in a specific area. And without gouging it. And then should I use the... Right. And also remember like when it's soft, you yeah. can control the shape of what you're removing a lot more. Okay. But I would not soften it and use a razor blade. I would soften okay. it and use a palette knife or well, these little guys. This this was working for the okay. Um, okay. And also, yeah, you want to pick a shape that matches the line that you want to be making. So if you want to be making, you know, a straight line, you're gonna use something that's straight. No, it's gonna be yeah, right. it's like waving in the wall okay right cool. i'm teaching like my young artists right now about line right and i even was talking to them about the physicality of line like you know how you move your body to do a mm-hmm. straight line how yeah. you move your body to do a circle right so it's it's all you know physical and it's not exactly obvious but it should be considered what mm-hmm. tool you use and what technique you use to get the results you want mm-hmm. so i can try let me just see something. I'm going to try to use um, wax medium to go over some texture. Okay. I also think that you need to add another layer to your piece of, and it needs to be either in wax medium or a light color over the dark color. Just on the dark area. Yeah, because I, I still, feel, can... I still I... feel like there's, I feel like the w- black is too high yeah. on the one side. So rather than try to struggle and take it off. Yeah, I see where it is, right. I would put, an, I would do the weaving thing, like here, here it is, and it's like up here, it's too high. I would just start to integrate a lighter gray or a neutral wax medium color over it, right? And to tone also, it down. To tone okay. it down, right. And also, I think you're going to need to determine the direction of the water mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and where is the water because the water was it if it was a stream right it's kind of running from right to left you know from or left to right mm-hmm. yeah if it's a lake it's still all around her right so i mean it could be anything but then you're going to need to narrate it interesting okay what I, what it, it was um it was a creek but it was kind of a you know a, a pond in the creek so it's a little both but what what i see and it's kind of hard to see here is it's almost like she fell into it and and splash this is coming out like this out 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 right so out would be lighter color out would be a lighter color so i like i wouldn't touch your your i think your left is my left like i wouldn't touch the left but i think underneath her under the heart i think should be lighter like this the light is going through on a diagonal from top. Okay, I want to make sure it understands. Okay, so this part is the part that's too dark. And I, I agree, need to turn but it right off. above her nose, like that whole black space above her nose just needs to not be so black. Okay, tone that down. And then you, 
and then this yes, part exactly. you said was light, lighter. Yes, and I love okay. the like, light gray that you used at, at, like above her hand. I like that color. And I think that there just needs to be like, um, she's too frank, framed by the black. Like you okay. need the black and gray and white to blend. So it looks like she's like in the water and there's water around her, right? The, the hardest thing for me, Pam, with encoding yeah. is getting it to emulate light. Yeah. Because, yeah. because of, its, of its mass and density, it's very hard to get it to like push and pull and have mm. highlights and shadows as you're working with it. Now the, so, so again, what I try to do is take each step of waxing and say, okay, this is gonna achieve this. And then that's it. Er, and then what do I need to do technically to make it light and dark? So one of the things you could do is just simply add pigment stick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on top of the black. You could just start adding white pigment stick or lighter, or gray. Or lighter gray. Okay. Like you could literally paint the black, like paint the light into the black, or right. you can add lighter wax over mm -hmm. it and then try to blend those two layers of wax, right? So do you see how they're, they're it's kind of like I used to say, it's like six of one, half dozen the other. Your goal is the same, but it's two totally different. You can get there by doing two different techniques. Right. So you want me to practice some of each just so I get the feeling of, of how. I think, I think ultimately at the end of the day, they are going to look, you know, they're going to achieve the goal, but they're going to look slightly different. So okay. maybe try, maybe on, on the upper right corner, like above her nose in that area, try painting with pigment stick and I have a little lower, more control, try okay. painting with wax, right? So the pigment stick is going to be smoother. It's just gonna control the surface texture. Whereas if you add more wax, you're totally changing the texture, the depth. So you, yeah. could, you could try both and see which one you like better. Okay, so I should get some pigment stick. Uh, yeah, make like, a, make like a light gray. And do you have uh, the colors to make like a light gray and caustic paint? Oh yeah, and also there's this mauve color and I can't remember how I got it, but. Um, right, and like I, think it's, I think when you're making colors, you can always like slightly tint, you know, you can always slightly tint your colors to, even if it's a gray, it can be like a warmer gray or a cooler gray. Okay, um, so we're going to pigment stick first. Yeah, let's pigment stick first. And I don't know if you um, purchased a, a pigment stick extender. I did, yeah. Okay, good, yeah, because I like that. But um, I just am going to let you know that it's a little bit, it doesn't dry right. glossy, but at first when it's wet, it looks shiny, but it, right. does, it does decrease as it dries. So, and I should let it dry naturally, or I would put oh, the... Oh, yeah. Well, you can... Okay, so if you, if you, you, this is like, this is kosher. You are okay. technically allowed to <laughs> fuse pigment stick. Oh, okay. So if I want to do it faster, I mean, one okay. time I just... Do you want to, do you want to watch me? So watch. So here's this area right here, right? I just have been like waxing it. If I, if I put pigment stick on top, right? Mm -hmm. There's a couple things I can do. One is I can uh, use my extender, put it next to the paint. I usually put it next to the paint, not in the paint. Right, right. And then I blend with a paper towel towards the extender. Yeah. Right? And so you see how I'm just like, and you see how it's like such a mm -hmm. translucent, mm -hmm. super translucent, creamy, like flowing. And it's just what I call going around, it's going into the, into the nooks and crannies, right? So this is really about, this is really about bury, I always call it like burying. So you're putting the paint in on the lower, lower levels. You're pushing it into the holes. So that would be one, another way of getting it smooth by using um, 
uh, pigment stick with extender, it's right, going to- so pigment stick to extender is thinning the pigment stick so it has the ability, it's kind of like a, like a, 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 a fair, like a, like, one of those core, like a corgi or a dachshund, right? They can go into the ground <laughs> and chase the, do you yeah. see how beautiful that is though? Oh, wow. So okay. do you see how the red, it's not on the surface, <laughs> it's inside. Yeah. Okay. And it's just so beautiful, right? Yeah. This, it's okay. on the surface, mm -hmm. right? Now I can fuse all of it. So I can technically take my heat gun and this is what I call insta dry, right? I could do, I could leave it and let it dry naturally. I could leave it and let it dry naturally, or I can fuse it. Yeah, one time I let it dry uh, naturally because I just like the design of it. Um, okay. So technically, right now I'm fusing. Uh, I'm fusing the pigment stick. So we'll see. And it's beautiful. Look, it got kind of like um, shiny and it kind of blended in a little bit. It made, it opened it up. It's actually really beautiful. Oh, it is. Yeah, I can see that. Wow. Oh my God. It's so beautiful. Look how it like, yeah. now, I'm going to wait a second until it's cool. And then I'm going to run my hand over and see if it dried. But it is really, wow. really beautiful. And that, and that will be smooth now, even though it looks textured. Oh my God. Yeah. So look, so here's my finger. It's not yeah. moving. I mean, it's coming off a little bit, but it's not moving. The pat I'm not losing the pattern. It's pretty beautiful. That is very beautiful. It is. It is. It's a beautiful I color. It's a beautiful pattern. So what I'm doing on this one is um, I I don't really the I don't have as many choices in my pigment six, but I have got this pink, which will it's not that mauve, but I'm thinking about it when I blend it in, mm -hmm. it'll it'll definitely lighten it. And then I I've got some uh, just FYI, this is rubbing off a little bit. Okay, it's totally drying it. But, well. It's just, I'm just kind of blending it with the paper towel. I mean, part of it, stay, it's still, I like it. I think it still looks so good, but um, it did rub off just slightly. So this is, this is another way of, of um, getting a textured surface smooth. Um, okay, paper towel. All right, so I'm gonna, so I put the pink and I've got the blending stick. Oh, maybe I put too much, I have to really rub. And uh, you want me to tone down the black around your face. Right, so if you, if you start putting white or light gray around the outside of the black, mm -hmm. it will, um, it'll, it'll start to lighten it because it'll look as though there's come, like there's light behind the black, you know what I mean? Well, right now I've got some of that little pink that I put in, um, let's see. Let me get it around her face here. Um, let's see. Here. So it's not white, but it's this pinky stuff. Uh huh. Oh, that's nice. Should I blend it in more? Yeah. And you're going to need like heavy. You're really, that black is so strong. You're going to really want to. So I could put some gray on top of the pink to blend all that in. I mean, I have a light, um, it's a neutral gray. Yeah. Try, yeah. yeah. And try to go, and go thick, go thick. Like go thick with the pigment stick. Yeah. You know, because oh. it always, the nice thing about the pigment sticks is it always, it, it moves, it moves so nicely. It expands so nicely. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, if it's not, if it's not, it, you know, moving enough, you can add, and look, you can always add a little bit of an extender just to your finger and, oh, and, rub, just, it and rub it on the top, you know, to get it to go like, and this just like pushes it down into the panel, into the wax. Oh, and it is, it's going down. It's right. Yeah. You can really, it's like you're really witnessing it. Like, you know what? It, okay. You know what it reminds me of? You know, when you're on the beach and those yeah. little, uh, little, um, 
shrimpy things when they go into the sand, like, right? They just go down deeper into the sand, like, <laughs> right in front of you. They're just like, later. Okay, I'm squishing it in. I've got plenty of blender. Squish and then on top of that. Hmm, maybe there was too much blender there because it came off. Still, hmm, interesting. Okay. It's hard, it's gonna be hard for me. Can you put your computer on your table? You mean so you can see it? Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm okay. still, it's still not where I want it, but it's, it's, uh, it's better. Oh, and I feel like the black is going down. So I'm doing a mixture of that neutral gray and the pink. So there's a little bit of color in it, but I don't know if you can see that. Um, you know what? Turn. Turn, rotate yourself around the um, computer so that the light is hitting. This way? Yeah, so that the light is hitting the piece. This yeah, way? It is over there. Yeah, it feels like there's a little bit more light over there. Okay. Is it still too shiny? I, I see it looks shiny. Uh, move back a little bit. Move back, move back, move back. Yeah, I think it's better. So, okay, so what? What's happening now is that you, you have, remember how you had white canvas? So you the line. We really want to blend that whole line, area. Yeah. So we want to, yeah. and what I really, maybe you're really going to have to put something solid on there to blend that line. So it could be encaustic paint, wax medium, or the pigment stick. But I feel like the pigment stick you're still using too lightly. Oh, oh I should really... Dig it in there, okay. I think okay. you can put it on like um, opaque, uh, opaque, like so you cannot see through it. So it's very thick. Okay. Uh, here, look, are you using? Are you using like a bright white? No, no it's, I'm using pink because there's the mauve on top and the pink seems okay, to be. Okay, so I think the pink is too mild. So look here, like if this is white, like look, I can put white on here, like serious, uh -huh. like that's like right, like that's serious. So okay. White. And what happens is that this becomes the new most important texture, right? Like the most important thing that's happening is the white. It's the brightest, it's thick. And honestly, you could just put the white right on there and fuse it in and see if you like what it's doing. Whoa. Okay. Now, do I have white? I guess I have or white. whatever the latest. I have. I have. Okay. I have yeah. The pink was very light, but I, I didn't. I don't think it was making. I think the black was just uh, too dominant. Over, you know, too dominant. Ah, I've got it. I think I'm gonna have to cut this. Uh... <laughs> now this again, so... again, like this is the type of thing too, where if you wanted it to dry naturally, you could mm -hmm. put it on and leave it, you know, and work on another piece, right? But you can also, you know, fuse it in if you want to continue to work. So you have choices. You always so you have want me to put it dark with a kind no, of with a line. We want to get rid of that line. I want you just to put white on there as if it's like the water flowing around her, a highlight in the water. Like it's probably well, now it's Okay, I put it on really thick, but I'm, so I'm gonna have to blend it in to make it look like water. And let me see it really thick before you do anything. Let me see okay. it. Because I might not want you to do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that <sounds> terrifying. <laughs> that might be terrifying. No, 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 no. Okay. Whatever, whatever you say. And, yeah. No, and the, okay, so, okay, so good, but you went too, too far, you went too, low like i wanted you to do that but go the other way going up here up here you mean yeah but back up for a second let me see the whole piece back up let me see the whole thing okay so yes yeah, so i want you to do more at the top get rid of that uh, i want you to get rid of that, the triangle yep and then at the bottom where you did it we're just going to wipe it off okay so everywhere between her neck and her shoulder down, it's going to come off. But I want you to like put it up. Up. Uh, okay. I thought you wanted me to get rid of the line. All right. 
So let me put some more up at the top. Yep, you could almost do that whole side. You could almost do like the whole side with that white layer on top. Wow. And then we're just gonna practice like blending options, right? So the bottom you could blend together, right? Mm -hmm. And the top you can leave, leave lighter. Like you can just start transitioning to it being lighter mm -hmm. and being this paint texture versus being, you know, the gray, the gray, the gray. Let's see if I can. Okay, so I'm rubbing right now. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm rubbing out the white that's on the bottom because I didn't understand that. Okay. That's okay. Get it. Right, and what's really cool about the wax too is, is wait, look at this for a second, Pam. Do you see how, like, when you put the pigment stick on there, it goes on what I call like the high areas. Right, right. Where it's not, right now, it's only on the surface. So all of the depth, right, yeah. really shows off by the empty spaces, right? Right. Uh -huh. So you can, you don't have to like totally cover up your darkness. You just want to add what's called like a rim light or a highlight light to the darkness because the darkness is like what you put on there to represent water and you mm -hmm. gave it texture to represent the water and what you want the water to do now is you want the water to emulate like real water which has all of these highlights and shadows in it mm. right so that the white is sitting on the surface of the black right on the top top parts on the top right exactly actually what's happening down at the bottom is the the white maybe because of the blending stick the white is going down so it looks a little bit like bubbles so it's that's in awesome i mean that's great maybe you like it and then guess what like if you don't like it we can blend it the other way right we can add we can wipe it off we can scrape it or we can put more black on top of it okay all right so i'm i need another paper towel and in a weird, in a way too, like if you want it to have more of a connection to your original photo, mm -hmm. you can always have a copy of the original photo to check around it. you to check where the light was, where the mm -hmm. realistic. Because once you put a couple layers of wax on, mm -hmm. you do forget. Like you forget what you know, yeah. your, what nature gave you, you forget what, you know, light, the light of the day had, you just kind mm -hmm. of you lose touch with it. And you get, you know, you go down the rabbit hole of these techniques right. or whatever um, ideas you're having, or, you know, right. Whack no. conversations you're having are, are you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's why I didn't want to lose that, that nice part of the look her lower part of the dress because that is beautiful in the photo right no you don't right and that goes back to what i was saying earlier about wild to mild within every piece right so that you have yeah. you have yeah. this dialogue right between, Ooh, this is between painting and photography that you're not just you know a dictator <laughs> Here, here, okay, here's, it's, I don't feel like stereo, but I want to show you. Oh my God, so much better. Yes, yes, beautiful. Uh, okay, so this is, this is showing me how to see because I. Oh my God, it's beautiful. And I love, see, okay, so if you hadn't done the black, you wouldn't have all that texture. Now you've toned the black so it looks more realistic. It has light areas and dark areas. So you could do, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. And the corner is Beautiful. You got rid of the frame. You got rid of the hard right angle in the corner. So now it's up here too. So should I? Well, you need to figure out. Okay. So you, what I would do is I would do the similar technique where you actually take a dark wax or black and you create the texture up okay. there over the white border. And then okay. you take the light colored pigment stick and you okay. go around it, on it, okay. in it. To kind of blend it so that it looks real so it looks three so cool. yeah okay. and back up for a second let me see what happened in the bottom corner back up back up yeah much better and now do you see how on the other side look on the other side do you see how how hard it is and right. overly illustrated it's not it's not it doesn't have like the three it doesn't have the nuance of the other side 
So should I be toning this? Especially this yeah, right around her face. Yeah, but it can fade off to dark. Like I wouldn't tone it all. Mm -hmm. like what, what I love about the right side is how it goes dark in the corner, gray, textured, and then up to the light, right in the corner. Okay. That's beautiful. We'll try and do that on this side also. Yeah, but you don't feel like you have to, to leave some of it dark. Like let yeah, it, yeah. Don't, okay. don't do it to all of it. Right. It, just do it to like maybe closer to her body, around okay. her feet, right? Just gently. And you can start out, the thing is too, like, you can always start out small and mm -hmm. then, you know, look at it, photo, okay. you know, and then add more. You don't have to like add it all, right? Okay. You can, especially with this medium, it's, it's, it's not going to matter if you add it all today or add, so you can go a little bit at a time. Okay, great. So I'll, I'll work on that other side. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. That was great, yeah. really good. It looks awesome. And then too, like now we can push and pull black and white because we have like an overall composition happening. You can also use the heat gun if you want to bring back a little part that's very photographic. You know, that's the part, the skirt part. Um, yeah, if you want to make something very photographic, you're going to think about how you're going to thin the wax in that area. So a little bit of heat gun gently scraping a little bit of heat uh, gently scraping and then if you got if it gets to be like a hole then you just take the wax medium and a little brush and you kind of just yeah. go over it again lightly to blend those layers right. back together right yeah good okay yeah so so we did the um we did the scraping and we did the pigment stick we haven't gotten to and caustics, but that's fine. I'll just work with basically with black and white right now. I'm not trying if to do you, color. If you want, well, what we had originally talked about was that you fit corrected the right side with pig, pigment stick and you corrected the left side with encaustic. Do you just feel, to learn you that. Okay. Because you can't mess it up, Pam. <laughs> All you can do is use it, be, be confident. Like anything that you do is a learning experience. So I would love to see you take the left side, make that light gray. If you want to wait till our next class, you can wait till our next class. I mean, I can wait till next week. It's not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck well, in my, well, so, stuck no, my I, house. <laughs> well, so I, um, no, I, I get it. So instead of doing the other, the, the new side, doing that with pigment, do the encaustic and see, so I see what the difference is. Okay, you, let, me try, let me try that. I can try that. Wait, hold on one second, one second, don't go anywhere. Do you okay. remember when we did this piece? I think I did it with your group. Yeah. Um, what I did was I demonstrated adding color, right, in two different ways. Oh. You remember this piece? Yeah. Oh, right, so I added, I oh, added good. color with encaustic here. Right. And I added color with pan pastel here. So, there's such a big difference, right? Oh my God, yeah, it's incredible. So the yeah. encaustic is like hard and dense, right? It's like, it, it, it's rougher, it's thick. I mean, it's kind of a shame that I added this stencil, but like, when here, the pan pastels are like foggier, mm -hmm. right? So like Pencil. this to me, this to me is what I call a high key, whereas right. this is like foggy. Yeah. Right, yeah. so this is like yeah. blurry. Okay, so this is like a foggy day. This is like a bright, sunny, 12 o'clock, everything sharp, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, it does. Yeah, as soon as you I saw it, I remember now that we did that. But you can do the same, so you could do, you did this, you did this with the pigment stick. This is like, would be- Oh, okay, that you was- could, Now sorry. you can try to do this, where you're gonna add a light color over over a dark color and, and what might happen is like what happened like in this area right where you see brush strokes of light oh, yeah. over dark uh -huh. right which okay. could be cool too it'll just look very different okay that's great no i think i'll, I'll continue with this um before the next class let me show you another one that maybe if you can help me just get to the next step it's another one that sure. i'm working with. sure um just you know it's like 
give me an assignment to work on so that on the next one, next class, you can get me through it. It's this one. The, um, and I, I sent oh, this. Oh, yeah. It's upside down. Is it upside yeah, down? I know. But I want it to be because she, it's. Oh, you're going to do it upside down? Okay. Yeah. So, what would be my assignment? I, I kind of turned down this over Hold here. Hold on one second. I have to turn this light off. It's hard for me to look at the. Yeah. I need to be lit, but it's hard for me to look. Um, it's hard for me to see what you're showing me with that light on. Hold on. It's like driving, you know, like when you're driving and you're fine with the darkness, but then when the light shines on you, like when someone drives past you, you're like, okay, now I can't see anything. Okay. Okay. Much so, better. So, so I did the underpainting. This was actually all dark, but I wanted it to be white and I wanted her to be coming through the birth canal. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking flowers down here or something down the line, but um, this, so this is just the, and I, I toned down this because this was hot. Toned it down with some charcoal, so. So there, there's no wax on it right now, right? No, it's just the underpainting. So I'm wondering what, what. But you did, you cut that beautiful shape. So, so is it gonna be white at the bottom? Do you want it to stay? Well, white? it could be a, a light pastel -y color, but I, I wanted to get rid of the black. I wanted it to be light at the bottom. Cause she's, she's being born into a beautiful world. <laughs> with flowers or I don't know. Are you going to add collage or flowers? Are you going to add something in that white space or maybe yeah, even thinking, draw, like grass or a field like you could do little incising etching? Yeah, or actually I was thinking of just kind of abstract flowers. I, I haven't used the pan pastels really yet. Okay so you could do the base. Yeah just have basically smooth maybe some texture maybe up in this area but this is smooth because I want her smooth and photographic and then smooth here because the pen pastels work better. So, okay, so why don't we try, okay, so why don't we try like um, splitting the splitting the canvas um, top and bottom where the top is rough. Yeah, that's what I was doing. And that the bottom we could, you know, is going to be smooth. So you can either, you can brush it on the whole, the whole thing, but then the bottom you're going to really heat gun. We can talk about heat gunning and really smoothing out brush strokes, right? Okay. And then you can actually like make that shape. I like the shape of the, where the black and the white connect. Hmm. Like you can make that shape so that below that line is smooth yeah. and above that line is brushed. Yeah, that's you know, what I was just thinking. Take, it would just take precision. You'd have to like smooth it out, brush it, right? Like consistently repeat that motion. Okay. Well, so <clears throat> for, to be ready for next week, because I want to, you know, have something to show. Be, I would um, just do your wax medium layer. You did right? underpainting, and now you need to put your wax on. Okay. And fine. if you just put the wax on, um, so listen to like I'm doing a, a collaborative. I'm co-teaching with an uh, encaustic painter friend of mine, and she just did a class. I mean, we're doing we're doing we're adding color today, but she literally said she doesn't sometimes three, three, three to four coats of wax medium before she adds in exactly. cost paint or pigment stick. Really? Wow. Yeah. wow. So, okay. but that makes sense because if you think about like this piece, if yeah. I pour wax on it, that's probably the equivalent. Like if I said pour wax or brush wax, it would probably be brush times three layers to make right. it equal to the pour. Thick. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You you could brush wax medium on, play with it. Brush wax medium on, play okay. with it. Brush yeah. wax medium on, play with it. So play okay. with it, of course, means fuse it, scrape it. You know, but maybe try more yeah. than one layer of wax medium. Is my point. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Cool. All right. Good. I've got, I've got cool. two. I want to. I was working on two things. All right. Yeah, so. Good. What's a good time for next week? Um, you know what? I'm free all day Wednesday. I, okay, I, I really am. I'm, for me. I'm just free all day Wednesday. Yeah, take it, take it while you can. I'm, I'm <laughs> while I can get. It. Yeah, hold on. Let, let me get my calendar because, um, yeah, I'm I'm usually very free. It worked really well because then I will continue. Hang on, sorry. <clears throat> for next week, we have. Um, that's the seventh. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Eight, 11 your time, eight my time is great. Okay. Perfect. That's great for me. Okay. So eight for Leia. Wonderful. Thank you awesome. so much. All right. Do I, I owe you, do I owe you money? I, I don't even know where we are. I have are. no idea. Well, just, just, just You know it. what? Let, I'll know, I'll know when I go to YouTube, but I feel like this might be our third or fourth class. I'm not sure. Well, we had, we went a little longer one, t one or two times. So yeah. I'm not, worried about, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. But just I, let me. I've been just trying know. to stick to four so that, because that's like an, that's, that's as high as I can count. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm uh, just kidding. I, I bet you know. I'll, I'll let you know. Thanks. Okay. Uh, great. No problem. Okay. All Perfect. right. Bye. 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 Good work today. Excellent work.